<laughs> Great. Welcome. Uh, the first question we have is about um, opening up the hip joints and how the how the uh, it affects the rest of, of your body. So tight uh, a tight core, which is covers about ninety nine percent of of most at least Americans, uh, and uh, so it is. There's a constriction there in the in the hip area, which causes us to to tense up that whole butt and uh, and lower abdomen, and that has an effect on the rest of your body. So that you know, Scott was just saying how releasing the hip joints, then he found his knees, which had been out, kind of moving back toward uh, the center. So it became uh, a much more uh, uh, efficient use of the of the knee joint. And uh, I was saying how the uh, whenever the the hip the hip joints are all locked up, then it affects other parts of the body, you know, as well. The knees, and then the, you know, if uh, if it, things are too tight, then then my uh, I have a tendency to if my knees are going out because my hips are so tight, then my weight is on the outside of my feet and in my heels, and I'm still and everything is is tensing up in order to to just be able to stand up. And then that affects my fix my my back, my, and then which then shoots up into my shoulders, my neck, etc. So everything goes south at that point. So uh, the, the what we covered last week was to uh, to use a uh, a prop like this to set the knee, which then requires that for you to move, to be able to release into the claw, you're not moving the knee, you're not moving the leg at all. So your body, you get this awareness of releasing down and turning, but without, without moving the leg. So there's, there's a, I think if you, if you can just stand up and everybody try this, because uh, some of you weren't here last week, I think it's a really important lesson. So the idea is that when we're releasing the qua, when we're sung qua, we are sitting down into that leg, but we're also keeping the leg immobilized so that the torso is moving, is winding up, but the leg is not. The leg remains this supporting structure. So if you can grab a chair or a wall or anything where you're just able to put your knee against it. So now you release down, spiral down, and just actually just feel what that feels like to, to release down into the quad without moving the leg, without moving the knee. And then return and then release again and then turn back and release again. So each time you're doing that, you're familiarizing yourself with what that feels like to be sun kwa. And this is not something you should take lightly. This is something that most people are having some difficulty with. Those of you who've been working with me for a number of years have heard this uh, speech uh, before, but it, there are levels of sun. And just because, oh yeah, I got that one. No, uh, do it again and take it even deeper because everybody else, you know, Everybody else is. It's, it's like you keep going deeper, deeper, deeper. And then you go the other way. You spiral down to the left and release. And just stop down there and just feel what that feels like to be sung, to, to not push away from the earth. The weight stays in the front leg. You pick up your left heel so that you're releasing down and just release down. It doesn't matter how far you go. I'm going a little farther than then you might just because I've been doing this a long time, but also that I can, you know, just for demonstration purposes, you can see this, this, my body is turning, but my leg is not moving. My knee is not moving. So then you get it so that you're able to go this way and this way and, and going back and forth without shifting your weight into your back leg. So you're learning to trust the supporting structure of your, of your leg, and then go to your other leg, 
pick up your right heel and uh, set the knee. And again, you're you're looking to spiral down to the left and just release down into that and just get comfortable. Notice my body is vertical. So what I'm not doing is this. I'm not doing this. And what I'm also not doing is, is this, where I, I turn and I'm pulling my butt back. As I turn, notice that it's just rotating. It's not, it's not kicking back at all. So we have this. Is everybody getting a good view of this with a, just the front facing? Is it okay? Good. So if you need a side face, let me know. But we're doing that, good. And then spiral down to the right. So you're releasing into the left quad, all the weights in the left. What's that? Zipper. Are you saying my zipper is down? Pardon a sec. Oops. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Pardon the interruption. So spiraling down and up, right? And, and actually don't even come up, you're turning. You're spiraling down, but you're turning back. So it's not a bobbing up and down, it's a spiraling down. Feel that down, feel, feel with that down. Get your body nice and vertical and get comfortable there. Get comfortable holding that position and turn oh. and spiral down to the Left and back, yes. She just wants you to move the thing back so she can see where your feet are. Okay, move this, move it out of the way? No, move it back and go on the side so they can okay. see your foot. All right, so can you see? No, I got it back a little farther. There we go. Okay. Okay. So pick up the heel, good. So then you're spiraling down. Notice that the butt is rotating, it's not. What I'm not doing is this. I'm not turning away from it. I'm keeping my knee there. This is a great exercise to, to get that inner sense of what it feels like to be sung kwa, to be able to get to access that incredible power that comes from that. And it's a physical muscular power as well as a energetic one. At the muscular level, you're harnessing some of the strongest muscles in the body. To, the, the thighs, the butt, the, uh, the torso, your core, all that stuff is doing it at a very physical level. But you're also, by releasing it, by getting sung, you are opening up this incredible channel that allows the earth chi to come up and fill your body. So then you bring your arms out like this and turn, and you can feel the energy, you can feel the chin that comes from that. Okay. Thank you, Scott. That was a wonderful question. Cool. All right. Anybody else? Any other? Uh, any other questions or or even uh, regarding that particular topic? All good. All good. Scott. So this isn't a question, but this I was watching uh, watching back one of uh, a couple of weeks ago, and there's a quote that you said that I would like to repeat because it really blew my mind. Please. Okay. So when training Tai Chi, your Kung Fu, your Tai Chi, you are getting more and more familiar with yourself as the insubstantiability of your being as your primary energy source. Whoa, who said that? You did. <laughs> <laughs> I know. That's, that's I, deep. I had, to start, I, had to, I had to rewind it four times and write it down. <laughs> that's a good one. Yes, yes, uh, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Amazing the stuff that comes out. <laughs> uh, but it, uh, uh, it sounds, sounds true to me. <laughs> the, um, <laughs> yes, so the, you know, that energy source is the, uh, is that insubstantiality. It is the mystery. It's, so it's not just the, the solid form that you see, you know, like I was saying before about the, you know, the muscle power, that's, that's definitely a part of it, but what animates that? What, what drives this, 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 this engine 
is this insubstantial energy source. And when we plug into the big G, which we can do by getting our structure uh, aligned properly, then we become part of that whole system and we are able to direct it with consciousness. Um, we're not just being driven by it like, you know, like a leaf blown in the wind. We actually, it's more like if you're, um, you're on this vast river with a huge flow to it and you're on a boat and the, the river is pulling you in a certain direction and you can steer the boat. Da, 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 da. You can go everyone. You can even go against the current if you like, but if you can align yourself with the current, then you are able to do cool stuff with that. And then we, the other elements get in there too to say you want to add the wind to that as well. And you can even get even more stuff going. So what we're doing with this, I think there's a, there's a quote actually, I came across in uh, an article that I, was, I wanted to talk about today. At, uh, um, I said, uh, we're quoting Rick Bear today. The, uh, Structurally, we are creating shapes that allow energy to move where we want it to go by relaxing into the support of the tensegrity network. And we'll talk about tensegrity here in a few minutes, but that, uh, that was, uh, it seemed appropriate to the, the topic here that, that we are creating shapes which allow us to, to direct the energy where we want it to go. So the source of that is something insubstantial. But what we're doing is we're trying to make it substantial by physicalizing that energy. That makes sense? All good? Good. OK, good. So um, excellent. So any other questions or, or topics, uh, suggestions? Uh, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it seems to be my name. No, I just wanted to um, uh, clarify or so for um, your suggestion for unkicking the hose is just keep doing the choir exercise. Is that your? I'd say that, that's 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 the, the 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 basement. That's that's the 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 foundation. Okay. Right, okay. and keep doing that, and and but also pausing, so you go into it and it's not just doing reps it's like feeling into it because what you're doing is you're reprogramming an ancient mechanism the it it's not designed we're not designed to be sun qua that's that's something that you know comes from from your kung fu that comes from your practice that comes from doing doing it over and over again and and taking it deeper Exploring the limits of the uh, uh, of it and learning how to uh, to find out where the edge is on it. So it's a um, uh, so I would say for now the, the 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 thing is just keep doing that and then move away from the the uh, the prop, the chair, whatever, and do it. And see how much you remember. See how much you can do in put yourself in novel situations and see how you can do it. Do it with your front leg. Do it with your back leg. Do it on both legs. You know, with the weight shifting back and forth with a parallel stance. And so you're gradually creating a new connection with your qua, so that sun qua becomes so familiar to you that whatever it's not happening you you feel like really it's something wrong <laughs> you notice it it's like oh that's something wrong here and and so you what what oh i, I that's right i'm not sun qua so then you go back and immediately do it doesn't mean you're sun qua all the time it just means that you can access it at will okay so let's uh, move on to this actually kind of feeds into a topic that I wanted to speak about today. And it's uh, regarding a, an article that I'd written for Tai Chi Magazine in the summer of 2001. And I republished it on the, on the website this week. 
Uh, so it's uh, in, in blog form. And um, so there's there are a number of key points in that which kind of fit right into this discussion. And uh, the, uh, let me get my, my notes here. And so the, the name of the article is Protection of Joints and Connective Tissue in Taiji Chuan. And, um, you know, one of the key points of this is that so many of the injuries we experience, and a lot of people have, have gotten injured by having their knees in the wrong position while doing Tai Chi, by not having Sun Kwa, and they have to figure out all these other ways to make the, the positions work whenever you're not Sung in your Kwa and uh, Sung in other places. So it's a uh, understanding the structure and uh, particularly the joints, which seems to be the one, the places that get, get the most, um, uh, we have the most problem. And these are, these are, are certainly one of those places. So the uh, understanding that the, the joints are designed in such a way that, that there are ball and socket joints, like the shoulder, which you can move around like that, right? And you're, uh, and there are other joints, like say the elbow, which is which is a moves this way, but also can rotate at the elbow. So it has a sort of a combination. The knees are much have much more fun whenever you move them in a uh, like this, where you move them back and forth, right? So there's that's good. Whenever you try to put a load on the knee and and move it like this you're gonna get some protest. It should be done in an unloaded position with, uh, so that you just have some, some limited range of motion, you know, like this. You can, you can do uh, this kind of loosening up exercise in an unloaded way. Whenever you start to load it, that is put weight on it, you want it to go in the way it's designed, which is, which is um, like this, right? It, so it opens and closes in a straight line. And every joint has its ideal power zone. That is the zone where it's gonna take it, it's uh, the most load, the best load. And in that power zone, there is a sweet spot. And that is where it is, you're gonna get the maximum bang for your buck. And that is an elusive spot because it changes with every situation. So uh, you can test this for yourselves to say you go up to a, a wall and you, you have your arms straight out like this and no problem, right? You can, everything is, is just fine. And then you bend the elbow, bend the elbow and you take it in, take it in, take it in. And you start to notice there's a point here where it starts to require a lot more effort to make this work. So what happened? We closed the elbow down past a certain point. And with an elbow, ideal spot is, is over 90 degrees. So between 180 and 90, you're in, that's, that's the power zone. That's where you can, you can load it up and make things happen. So it's, if you're in that zone, then you're, fairly safe, but within that, there is a point right about, right about here at a 45 that it feels to me like it's a sweet spot. So that's why so many of the postures have this kind of, have this kind of, of, of shape to it. There is a, there's, you're at a 45, you're not standing like this, and you're not standing like this, you're standing with the arms at a 45. And that's, so you're getting comfortable with that, with that sweet spot. And that's because you can get a, uh, your, you can do more work with that with, without a, a danger of injury. Uh, wanna give me a hand with this? So, Maria wants, Maria wants to push me and 
and her, her arm is like this, and she tries to push me from this position, she's going to have a lot of trouble because this is, the elbow has collapsed way below, way past the 90 degree point. So we just bring this out a little bit to, okay, so now we're just, we're about 91 degrees now, and suddenly she's got a lot more power, right? So the, she is, if we take it to, is to um, a point here where it's uh, where we have a nice 45 degree angle then we have we have a uh, uh, even more power that she's she found the, the sweet spot there yes they used to have us do this and then extend from but oh, that's the rotation no that's 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 something different but we'll, we'll get to that the, 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 the uh, but that that's that's true similarly if uh, um, if if Maria goes down, it goes onto one leg, and she's her. Uh, if she pushes her knee up past her toe, so that the 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 uh, leg is is straining the knee, then this arm gets weak because she's kinking the hose there. So much effort is is required to keep the knee there. But if she straightens up the knee to find her sweet spot, then she is able to this arm becomes 10 times stronger just by just by unkinking the hose at the D. So every every joint has these uh, has these spots. Thank you. I, I'm gonna need you again, but uh, at the, that's it. So every joint has these spots and it's, it's up to us to explore what those are. Where is the sweet spot in each of these in each of these places? So, and you, if you just try it right now, if you just bring your arms like this, actually stand up and do it. This is even better. So you stand up, bring your arms out like that, right? And now bring them in close to your chest and just feel what that does when you do that. Feel the effect that has on your on your arms. I just gradually take out a little farther, a little farther, a little farther, a little farther, and you start to notice. Oh, okay. You get to this point and it starts to open up. You start to feel like, oh, okay, I got some. This is not such a big load anymore. And then, oh, I take it a little farther. Oh, yeah, there's that's that's kind of nice. You take it out even farther, and it's like, okay, that's I've exceeded my, I've gone past my sweet spot. It still has some, it has some strength to it, but it requires more energy to sustain this shape out, all the way out to here than it does here. So you say, oh, okay. So just recognizing where the sweet spot is and also the range, where's the power zone? The power zone goes from here back to oh, right about here when the arms are about, Arms are about 90 degrees, and then and then you go past that and you're out of your power zone again. So this is a, a hard one lesson for me because I was injuring myself constantly playing push hands in the early days by uh, by trying to do too much from an in from a uh, a weak position. Yeah. If you uh, go past the point, then other joints and things will start to try to fix things. Yes. So, because if you bring your arms in like that, then your shoulders tend to ride out. Yes. Okay. Yes. You want to talk about that? No, you talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What Maria was just saying is that you, you go past that point and you start to use other, other things to compensate. That's where we get into muscular tension is because we get into bad habits and then we have to use other things to compensate for that. And so, uh, Whenever I advise people, people, some people say Tai Chi people should never do a push up or never, never do a bench press or anything like that. I say, not exactly. You just have to do it right. Right? So if you're, you know, if I'm if I'm like this and I'm uh, I'm going one arm and I'm going down, there's a certain point here where I can actually benefit from that. But I go down too far and I get I get very weak. If I do it on the wall here, you know, I go past a certain point, and then I'm having to use a lot of extraneous muscle muscle uh, tension 
in order to be able to push away and make that happen. Whereas if I just go down in, in that power zone, I can actually benefit from, from, from doing that. What's that? I got to try that. <laughs> <laughs> See, I can actually benefit from, from having, putting that load on the system, but just as long as I'm not stressing the, the joints too much. Um, the, uh, there's something called the Golgi tendon organ in the, in the body, and it's actually in the, where the tendon meets the muscle. And it's a pressure gauge that gives you feedback. Uh, what did I say? It was, uh, uh, it actually measures precisely the net amount of force being delivered by a muscle. So you, uh, this, what it does is it's a little gauge in, in, in your, in your body mind that says, oh, if we go past this, we're going to, we're going to be courting injury. So if you, you know, you're trying to lift up that back end of a, uh, a 1959 Buick, um, you're going to have some, some, some challenge there. And your Golgi tendon organs are going to tell you about that. Where we run into a, uh, and this is something we develop over time. This is something a, that, that information gets, our, our bodies say, oh, okay, this is, this, these are my limits. I know if I go past this point, too much. So whenever we, in Tai Chi, whenever we start to create effects which vastly exceed our expectations, there is a, a resistance. The body mind says, I can't do that because that would court injury. It, it, is not used to, to the uh, creating those big effects with so little power, with so little actual muscular force. So it kind of gets into an, uh, an idea that, but I didn't do anything. That's because the Golgi tendon organs are not registering danger. They're not saying, oh, wait a minute. This is, uh, we're, we're at maximum here and, and uh, something bad's gonna happen. It's like, cause you're not at maximum cause you're not using that muscular tension. What you're using instead, this is where Maria was talking before, is you're using tensegrity. So uh, this is a cute little device that uh, I use for the, uh, to, to ten tensegrity is where the, the structural tension at the surface uh, creates the power. It, it distributes the energy throughout the whole system. So you have this, and whenever it's in this collapse shape, it's it's just a uh, uh, a bunch of disconnected uh, things where one side is not really affecting anything else. But we expand this to its fullness, and then we have this shape, which is I press in on it, and it it has structural tension, and the that's because the the energy is distributed throughout the whole system. And this is exactly what's happening with your connective tissue system. You are getting, you're able to take that energy and, and move it throughout the whole system. And it then you're able to create effects that are far exceed the limited power of your, of your muscles. So going back to what Maria was saying before, you want to do that, do that demo? So the, uh, if, If we then collapse Maria's, uh, let's do this arm here. We collapse Maria's structure so that her arm is completely collapsed here. I'm pressing in like this. If she tries to do that with her muscles, there's no way that she's going to be able to do that. But if she reaches out with her elbow, she points her index finger and then just reaches through me, she's able to, to generate enough power, even though the structure is weak. If she tries to do that with her muscles, then we're going to run into the same problem we do with before. But she's saying, no, no, I'm using my feet. I'm using my head. <laughs> I'm using my back. I'm using my legs. Everything is coming in together. And the energy is extending through me because the tensegrity of the system allows for the energy to, to be able to uh, pass through without any kinks in the hose. Thank you. It, 
can you hear my question? Sorry? Can you hear my question? I could not. Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, so I had my question. Oh, it's Beatrice. Um, so when Maria's hands in here, it doesn't look anything like the ball. Like so the, the ball is an amazing model. Can you hear me? Uh, can you not? Yes. So say it again. Where Maria's so, hand is I where? Mean, well, looking at the ball, the ten, I, I never really noticed the ball, the tensegrity model, so powerful to show how strong it is. Is that right here? Yeah, is that's that right such here? a powerful yeah. model. Yeah. But when, when Maria's hand's in here, it looks more like the collapsed version. And I, it's hard to see how she can access whatever's happening in that expanded ball by just simply rooting and pointing. Can, I, can you say a little more of how, I, I don't know if that's, you can elaborate. That's a great question. That's a great question, and that's where we get into the woo-woo. And that is um, <laughs> uh, because there we're using consciousness to create the energetic connection, to create the, the whole system comes online at that point. So no, it's no longer limited to the physical expression as the tensegrity ball is. It's we're able to, to create a um, a structure and and animated by that insubstantial force I was talking about earlier. You had something uh, you want to say? Um, yeah, I was going to say that when what changes there is the uh, connection in terms of tensegrity. What changes is the connection between my finger, my elbow, my foot, and my entire system coming online at the same time, which I think is what you said. Right. But um, so it doesn't have to do with the shape so much as the energetic connection. Right. Right. So want to give me take take me back to gallery, please. Yeah. Good. So uh, thank you. That, does that make sense? That's, so we're so. This is where this is where life takes on qualities that are not do not exist in inanimate objects. You know, we're able to bring consciousness into these structures and create new forms. And this does not exist in nature. It's something that is something that is created by by bringing this this new way of of of, of looking at it and and thinking about it and 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 making something happen. Not something we we did when we were babies and now have, you know, have, have forgot somewhere along the line. No, now this is new. This is something that is uh, we're going to a whole different uh, evolutionary stage whenever we start to play with with these ideas. And uh -huh. so and so that ball is more of a metaphor than an actual model in a way. It's a it's a demonstration of of a type of tensegrity. So you can think but of a it's surface. Not, it's not a. It's not an actual reflection of what we're what we're doing because it's because what we're doing is something, as you said, not, something not something even more entirely Although, physical. Although going back to our earlier our earlier uh, idea, that, which is there is even though Maria is able to do it from here, she does it better out here. That is, so this is a, a long way from her sweet spot, but she's able to override that via tensegrity. But if we combine the, the sweet spot with the tensegrity, with the intention, with the energy, then cool stuff happens. We start to, we're able to get into the magic. Richard. Oh, Dennis wanted to say something too. Oh, Dennis first? Okay, Dennis. Where do you go? All right. Well, Richard, when, well, Dennis is finding his way back. Um, I just got an interesting image. Um, without coherence, without tensegrity, your collapsed arm is on its own starting at the shoulder. Yes. When you become coherent, this appendage simply becomes part of the whole. Yes, excellently stated. Concise, much more concise than I was. And uh, but you're right; it is part of the whole. And and you're it's that's why I said you're 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 feeling with your feet. You know your 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 arms, your feet, your you know your your legs. Everything is coming together, and it's uh, and there's an expression of wholeness. 
And that's what coherence means. It means wholeness. Back to the gallery. Let me see if anybody else. Uh, so did Dennis, Dennis find his is, way back yet? Dennis is back, but he's uh, he doesn't have his video on. I'll okay. ask him to start his so, video. All right, so get that good. So um, I mean, this is uh, essential stuff because we're when we're talking about tensegrity, we're talking about the substantial. We're talking about the qualities of something of stuff, right? When we're talking about energetic coherence, which we access both the same the same way, uh, it's the insubstantial part. It's the non-stuff. And both in Taiji Tran, that both of them, the insubstantial and the substantial, come together to create these beautiful effects. Dennis, are you back? Can you hear us? Uh, Want to unmute? Give it another try. Oh, oh, there you go. Can you do it? I can't unmute him You can't myself. unmute him. I can only ask him to unmute. All right. He's looking for the unmute. Okay. Okay. All right. So wait, can can I just show yeah. something while while Dennis okay, wants to show something? While Dennis is finding his unmute button. Okay. So come here. I'm just gonna tell you what's going on here. So here we are. Right. All right. Body. Maria is a body. Maria is an object. Maria is a thing. All right. Maria feels Rick. Mind feels the elbow, points the finger, body starts to come online, consecrity starts to happen, pointing starts to happen, and spirit says, go away. <laughs> right? Body, 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 body. Body, body, and I put a load on that. Nothing. Predictable response. Body, 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 align, I mind. push in, and not predictable response. Right? So what's happening is, I'm going from being a physical object uh, through my focus and attention on elbow alignment, finger, all that comes on the line. Once one thing comes online, the other things come online, and then there's a point at which, uh, you know, Rick can feel the point at which I'm all there, all there. Right. Right now, able to over, is, over, override the structural limitations of the collapsed structure and able to create something new. Okay, so, now Dennis is back. Dennis is back. Yeah. Dennis, got a question. That train left the station. Continue on. No, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I, forgot, I forgot what I was on. I forgot. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, move on. Continue. Never mind. <laughs> okay. So uh, your body has protective devices. The Golgi tendon organs is just one example of that which is there to, to tell you that, hey, it's dangerous to do this. I mean, the, it's, the, it's quite possible to try to do something with your muscles, which is more than your physical structure can handle. We've all had sprains and strains and things like that where we've gone too far, we've done too much, we've tried to, we've exceeded the, the realm of caution and we've gone and we've created some injury. So uh, the, those protective mechanisms, like the Golgi tendon organ, are there just to, to say, hey, you know, you might want to back it off of there, back it off there, a little dude, you know, and then so you, uh, you create a, a proprioceptive and enteroceptive model for yourself. So where you have an awareness of, okay, this has not worked in the past, I'm not going to try it again. But what we're doing now is saying, okay, if we try this different way, which is coming from a state of coherence, from wholeness, we then have to establish new benchmarks for ourselves of, of what, is, what is possible at this point. We still go about it in a smart way. We test out and say what, what is possible, what's not. So stuff, you can't immediately jump from zero to a thousand, but if you can go from zero to 10, to 20, to 30, to 100, to Da, 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 then you're then you're able to get to a thousand. So then you have four ounces able to deflect a thousand pounds, you know, from the classics. That idea that that we can, once we get over the idea that, that this is how we deflect a thousand pounds, but we deflect it like this, you know, then it becomes possible. Then the the 
the magical, the mysterious, the wonderful becomes doable. Okay. okay we're going to do the. Uh, yes, we're going to do that. And let me see if there's anything else. One. So. Uh, bu, 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 bu. So. Anybody yeah. else? Uh, yes, Valerie. Yes, Valerie. Yes. Question. Okay. Now this is an. Um, this is something I've been experiencing since we, you know, started working with the elbow and especially elbows, especially in this last maybe week and a half, that at any given moment, when I focus on the elbows, I just feel everything and there's nothing to test it on. It just feels like everything is expanding. That's, yeah. that's what you're talking about, except for at that moment, there's no way to test that it's actually you know i could move rick barrett but that's yeah. looking for the feeling right just that yes trust yeah. it yeah. <laughs> so that just, just learning learning to learning to trust that because if we're changing our uh our idea of, of, of what is possible from an externally derived set of uh, uh gauges to an internal one where you're able to actually identify what that internal state is, what that insubstantial state is, and say, oh yeah, if I'm in this place, then, then I'm cool. And last week we had, had mentioned the, uh, the idea of, you know, for, regarding the elbows, you know, the Superman posture, you know, that is, you get that, and if you just feel into that, it's something different, right? This is different than this. Right? This has a different feel to it. And part of it, I believe, is because of the elbow gym. You know, I've talked, I've written a couple of blogs about this recently, and we've talked about it in the last few things. But you you just stand up and just, you know, get in there, you bend your knees a little bit, you feel the weight of the balls of your feet, and you go into your Superman posture. Hey, you're right, you know, then you're like you're able to uh, to have that uh, that that sense of uh, vitality that comes from that. So we don't have to do it that way. We can just go took, like that and just reach out a little bit with your elbows and you can get a very similar feeling, right? You can find your elbows in, in a Tai Chi form. Say, if you go to ward off, what do you do? You, you set the elbow first and then raise the hand, right? So just just do that. Just stand up. Just just bring your your, your arms down like this. If you just try it once, just going from the shoulder and just picking up the whole arm as a unit and bringing it out like that and feel what that feels like. So you're going to ward off and you're going like this, right? And that's entirely generated by my shoulder. Now I bring my elbow up. Just feel just feel that the arm is still hanging. It's it's still down, but the elbow is reaching out. It's set, just like we were setting the knee earlier. You set the elbow. Okay, so just feel into that and notice that immediately your hand starts to tingle. It starts to get you feeling the chi in your hand just by reaching out with that elbow. So you've established the the the, the framework for the chin to be to be energized, and then just bring your hand up like this. And you know, your arm is in that in your sweet spot. So you've gone from here to set the elbow to bring your arm up like this. So now you have Pong Jin or ward off energy. So that's oh, it's one of the eight Tai Chi Chan gates, the Ba Men. So oh, you're, you have this shape. But if you try to do that from the shoulder, you want to give me a hand here, dude? It, uh, if we're uh, we're exploring that, you know, Marie goes into a ward off pause. She goes to it like this. Good. If she tries to, to, so she tries to ward off using coming up from the shoulder and tries to push, tries to to ward off of that. No, there's no power, right? Why? Because we have this nice long lever. We have a fulcrum up here, and if we're doing it as a physical action that sucks right but if maria 
sets her elbow first, points her index finger, and then just comes up like this. Boom. Hong Jin. She, there's the quality of and doing it. She just comes up here like this and just feels into that shape without, without pushing me away, just feels into that shape. I'm already in my heels and I'm ready to go even before she does anything. Just by the energy coming up, it's an up and out energy. And this is where we get closer and closer to the woo woo stuff. You set the elbow, you, you just point the index finger and just you're feeling that. And I, she doesn't even need to, to use any kind of force at all to make it happen. I am, I feel I'm being lifted just by that simple thing. So as a practice, what do you do? You set the elbow and huh, boom. And notice that also it's not a collapse shape. It's not like this. It's set the elbow and boom. There's space between my my forearm and my in my body. Why? Because that's the sweet spot. And you can feel it. You go into that, that shape and then you say, okay, now bring it in, bring it in, bring it in, bring it in, bring it in. And, and notice that as you do that, you collapse the field. You collapse the field and you set the elbow and you bring it out, bring it out, bring it out, bring it out. And then say, oh, oh, right here. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah, yeah, baby. That's, that's, that's working. Yeah, that's, uh, okay. Now I got some pong gin going, right? I take it farther than that and not so much. But uh, back here, tick, 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 tick. There's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a range here where the power is at its maximum. And that's where the internal or the insubstantial and the substantial come together. There's a, you get the, the two vectors are coming together and they line up and then you create this resultant, which is heading out in a certain direction, and it's got a lot of, a lot of mojo with it. Back to gallery. Here we go. Good. Okay. Scott. So um, that was amazing. Doing that and lifting my arm, I got the exact same feeling I get when you're demonstrating something, and I say to you, but I didn't do anything. <laughs> oh, that. Know, that happens all the time. But I just... Just doing that, I got that feeling. So that was just amazing. Thank you. Fabulous, fabulous. Because now you're there, you're there's a recognition of the internal state that gets produced by that, and that is your reference point. It's not rec pushing on my arm. It's oh, this is me doing it. <laughs> Valerie. What I noticed was when I have my arm up and you know, you know, letting it come closer and closer and closer to the body. When you talk about that tingling in your hand, when I am feeling my elbow, I, you know, I get that, whatever position I'm in, I get that tingling in my hand. But then when I draw the hand in closer and closer into the body, you know, closing that down, the tingling goes away. Right. Same thing going too far, the tingling goes away. I mean, that's your own body telling you, you know, for me anyway, my body telling me that this ain't nothing. This ain't nothing. Ah, there's something. It's some <laughs> yeah. Exactly, exactly. And the hands are such a wonderful barometer of, of your whole body energetic connection. If you, you know, if you feel that tingling, pulsing, heat, you know, circulation, fullness, you know, that says, oh yeah, I got, I got something going here. And that, but that's still external, that's still, even though it's, it's interoceptive, it's still a uh, substantial. And then, you know, there's that, the thing that Scott was talking about is there's that, there's that, oh, we're, oh, we're, we're, in, we're in the woo-woo place now. Then we're, we're, in the, we're playing with the insubstantial on that. And, and that's, where, uh, that's where, where the fun is. Cool, anybody else? Any other thoughts, questions? Good. Okay, we're we're, we're Do you want to wrap up with one exercise? Just um, maybe this one. Yeah, let's uh, let's just do one of the foundation exercises. This is one of the Tai Chi foundation exercises, and so um, the Taoist Tai Chi foundation exercise. So, and this, to stand with your feet parallel, weight over the balls of the feet, and just set that knees are unlocked, 
and it's like you're getting ready to jump off a diving board and bring your arms out like this. So we're looking at the sweet spot here. So you bring your arms out so you have that nice uh, nice shape there. Find out, you know, where where's where's that comfortable spot there? Not here, not here, but kind of right in there. And then you're going to rotate your forearms. And this, as you reach in, you turn them this way with the palm, turning your palms down, you reach with the thumbs. And then as you're going the other way, you reach with the little fingers and just feel that nice and slow and really feel into your body and notice how fast you are filling up. Keep your weight over the balls of your feet. You're setting the, you're setting the elbows. So the elbows are immobilized, right? They're, you're, you're doing this. And so the entire rotation is happening at the forearm, reaching with the thumb, like you're, you know, tightening a jar, a jar lid or opening a jar lid, reaching with the, the, the little fingers, you're coming around like that, back and forth like that, and just feel into that. The muscles are relaxed. Woo! Even so, you're going to notice that there's a little bit of fatigue that gets involved with this. You do it a few times, it's like, oh, what's going on here? There's a little fatigue happening, even though there's really no resistance. Just that rotation. Feeling that. And it's your body's giving you a signal that, oh, wait a minute. We're experiencing a whole lot more energy flow than we're used to. And it's one of the signals that one of the ways your body will get your attention is like, oh, okay, this is this is a lot here. But just keep doing it and just keep playing with that and just notice the field that gets generated. And then stop and just bring your arms out here, set your elbows. And just feel the poles in opposition between your hands. Just feel that, feel the energy field that you have generated. You can feel like two magnets kind of pushing against each other. There's an insubstantiality there, but there's something going on. That field is accessible to you anytime. So you want to, by doing this and doing this again and again, you create a familiarity with this field, your ability to create that. At first you do it by doing an exercise just like we did, which we did for a minute and, and we're able to generate a tremendous amount of energy. But now bring your hands down. Feel in your hands and notice the intense fullness in your hands. Now bring your hands up, set the elbows and bring them up again, very relaxed and just recall that. Not, don't remember it, recall it, bring it back, bring it back, bring the energy back. So what we're doing is we're creating a, a resource of recreatable potentials of energy. Energy is created by poles in opposition. So we have two poles here in opposition. We're generating energy. They're only in opposition because you say they are. Because your mind says, oh yeah, I'm holding these poles in opposition. I bring my hands down again. Feel the energy in your hands and bring it up again and just feel that recreatable potential. And this is just one example of those potentials. The Tai Chi transform, any Tai Chi transform has lots of these. And we call them gins. Or uh, Lynn has a question. Lynn, yes. Yeah, so this is magnificent. And this is what? when I am um, feeling the poles, and when you first said feel the poles, I was feeling those very strongly, but I was also feeling encased in an entire um, 
energy shield that was particularly strong along the back. And uh -huh. so when, and then you put the hands down and you feel the hands really full and you bring them back up and recall it. Should I be recalling and, and focusing more of that energy into the hands or should I go ahead and let the whole shield hang out and be there? <laughs> that, that's beautiful. I, uh, that shield, that's, that's called Wei Chi. Mm -hmm. okay. Wei Chi, it's, it's an external Chi. It's, it's, a, it's like a force field around you. Yeah. And it is said that your Wei Chi, it wards off pernicious influences. I believe is the is the is the language. So having a strong Wei Chi means like you have this. You're exporting coherence into the environment, Sweet. and it is neutralizing bad Chi around you by 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 doing that. And you're converting negative Chi into positive Chi by just by doing that. And wow. that's something that that's 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 kind of cool. It's very cool. It's really great. Yeah. yeah. It's great. Yes. And but we're all doing that. Everybody who's, who felt something there is it has was doing some of that, you know. And you know your familiarity with with that and say, okay, what's me? What's not me? What's me? What's not me? And and then you start to like get these get a sense of of the insubstantial effects that are being created by these exercises, and. You, the more you do it, the more familiar you get with it, the more fun it is to, to explore and say, hey, what else is possible? That was cool. What else can we do? Yep. You know? <laughs> and that, that gets me fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Cool. Anybody else? I just, I got so warm as we were doing that with holding our hands, like, like it overheated my whole body. Yeah. That's normal? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that what's happening is when that happens, we get a lot of chi going through it. It's like running more electricity through a wire than it's rated to to handle. Yeah, yeah, you know? I felt like that. So yeah, was, that's, when, uh... that's, when fuse, that's when fuses start to pop. When, you know, <laughs> breakers. You know, and they, uh, it's like, oh, okay, a little too much load here. I'm going to have to upgrade, upgrade my wiring. So the upgrade on the wiring is, you know. That's where we go back to like the Golgi tendon organs for the muscles. You know, we have that sense. The heat is like, oh, there's resistance happening from my system saying that, okay, we're overloaded here. Let's cut it back a notch. And so you, know, you, you take a break and then you do it again. And then each time you do it though, you expand your capacity to handle more and more chi. And so, I mean, at, at, at its core, Chinese medicine is the basic two basic principles are have lots of chi and circulate it well or circulate it freely and and that will ensure you know happiness and 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 health you know and and so what we're doing here is we're we're handling the first part of that which is have lots of chi and we're also doing the second part which is circulate it and then fun we have fun from there okay anybody else great uh <laughs> great okay great to great to see you all thank you so much um uh don't forget to tip your waiter and uh i uh, hope to see you soon okay bye-bye bye. 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 bye everyone good to see bye. you bye. Bye. bye everybody it's thank great you to see thank you Rick. thank you maria thank you love you all love bye. you too.